I'm HP and this is Dr. Pink and today I'm going to talk about a classical suite, a pretty easy one, with tapping. Yeah, something like this. So let's check it out how it works. It's not so hard as you might think. All right, so let's see how it works. It's more or less pretty easy from the technical part. Let's play with open string and like basic tapping technique. Um, it's like this. To understand how it works, uh, it's in G minor. So this, here we play G minor arpeggio, starting with the open D string. So the main problem playing this that we need to start with the open string, so we need to first attack it. We attack it with the right hand, like this, and then we start. 0, 5, 8, 12. 0, 5, 8, 12. That's a basic movement, but it's like, you start like this. Open. Now we start. And you start slow with it and then gain the speed. The main problem is that you somehow get a little bit lost in the, in the speed. Always remind how the figure sounds like and keep it going in your mind when you play it, otherwise you get stuck because it's pretty easy to play from the movement, but if you don't have the melody in your mind, you, some, some can get lost. When you want to gain speed, it's not precise anymore, and, but to make this wave coming, you need, you need to have it fast, so start slow. See how I create this wave, like this. As I said, the movement are ve is very easy, but your mind is too slow, you need to train your mind. Then we move to D7, 0, 4, 7, 10. Back to G minor. Now we move to C minor, so we start with the open D string. Tap in here in the fifth on the G string, eight, twelve, or now we release on the G string with open, so it's like... like and changing to C minor is a little bit tricky because there you can get stuck. <laughs> I almost sometimes I also get stuck there. Then you go from C minor. Back to G minor. To D minor. Same. Then you can add some extra movement if you want <laughs> on the D7. That's a pretty cool technique. You play this and then you start moving. 12, 13, then you change the string but keep the, the motion going on here on um, 11, 12, 14. This way you can put in some additional movement. C minor. Oh, oops. <laughs> he just keep it going on. Then um, the main thing is um, 
accelerating the speed and slowing it down a little bit to get it this simple thing breathing and make it really interesting i mean the, the basic movements are not so hard but to, to make it interest it starts slow get it more dra dramatic see stop all with these three chords and now we have the dramatic climax of the first but now comes the second part we double up That's pretty dramatic. <laughs> now, what we do now, we play the G minor on the low E string, three, six, and we keep the, the, the movement of the right hand the same. So we have open D string, then comes in. See, open D string, then the three, six, 12, zero, three, six, two. On the D7 we move down in 12 here on 2 and 5. Back. Now on the C we do the same thing. Open D string. Now comes here. 3, 6 and now 12 again. See? And then to keep the notes in your mind, um, which are going on, is the main thing to keep it fluent because the movements are not so hard. And now we end up the phrase. Seventh, seven, eight, ten, eight, seven, five, four, five, five, six, five, three, two, one. I end up with the G minor chord. That's the whole thing. to get the perfect mood um, we probably need to put on a renaissance wig <laughs> and feel a little bit like Johann Sebastian Bach in Swiss German there's a place where I'm from this guy is called Johann Sebastian Bach yeah in English Johann Sebastian Bach <laughs> yeah um, enjoy this a little bit it's even if you're not so much into tapping it's a cool thing and um, Give some cool, cool ideas. 
and really um, trains your leg out of playing abilities also if you're not so don't want to get too deep into tapping or touch technique then enjoy it and uh, I don't know how you want Sebastian von Bach would say he would say uh, Auf Wiedersehen <laughs> yeah <laughs> 